The city is located in one of the planet's sunniest places, with an average sunshine duration equivalent to that of the Sahara region. Phoenix has the most sunshine of any large city on the planet, with 3,872 hours of glorious sunshine each year. The average July high temperatures are the highest of any large city in all of America. On a typical basis, there are approximately 111 days every year with a high of no less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius, with the majority of those occurring between the end of May and late September. On average, 21 days per year, high temperatures reach 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius. On June 26, 1990, the mercury reached an all-time high of 122 degrees Fahrenheit, or 50 degrees Celsius. Phoenix's yearly minimum temperature is in the mid to low 30s. It rarely drops below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or 0 degrees Celsius. Snow is uncommon, thanks to the advent of the compact air conditioner in 1945. Phoenix, a small hamlet in Arizona, has grown into a massive urban center with approximately 5 million citizens, making it the fifth largest city in America. Phoenix founded itself in 1867. Phoenix has evolved from a dusty town to a large urban city, with homes placed in the area's flat desert terrain. Phoenix remains one of the nation's 10 most rapidly developing urban areas. Low taxes, a low cost of living, a growing economy, and plenty of job opportunities have all contributed to the city's rise. Phoenix, located in the Sonoran Desert, is the biggest city in America with a hot desert environment. Phoenix experiences lengthy, extremely sunny summers and brief, pleasant winters. Phoenix, Arizona, while having just under 50% of New York City's population, uses more than twice as much water. Climate change is putting the city's sustainable water supply at risk. Phoenix set a new record for the number of days with temperatures above 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius in 2023 with 54 consecutive days. As temperatures increase, Phoenix's limited water supply begins to decline. Last year, Phoenix halted the issuance of new residential construction permits due to a decreasing water supply. Over the last 80 years, critics have become louder about the city's rapid suburban growth across the desert. Native Americans lived in the area for countless years before Europeans arrived, which led to the formation of Phoenix and Arizona in the exact same location. The modern-day American Southwest formed a barely populated nearby region on their empire's borders. In 1846, the United States began a war with Mexico, and acquired more territory in southern Arizona, resulting in the simultaneous admission of Arizona and New Mexico to the Union. Arizona's present chronic water shortage began in 1862, predating the establishment of Phoenix. The Homestead Acts in America aimed to attract settlers to the country's barren western regions. Settlers who migrated west received a promise of 160 acres of free territory with the option of purchasing additional land at a reduced price if they agreed to start farming. In the southwest, farming and cultivating the soil proved challenging, particularly in the territories of Southern California and Arizona, New Mexico, where water was limited and irrigation infrastructure was lacking. The Reclamation Act of 1902 attempted to restore land for agriculture and civilization by funding major irrigation schemes across the American West. This act dammed all of the major rivers in the American West. The Colorado River is the largest western river 
and the Hoover and Glen Canyon dams produced vast reservoirs in the desert, channeling an ample supply of water to western settler fields. Early settlers in Arizona and other parts of the southwest began cultivating crops and raising cattle in warm climes with plenty of water, resulting in a vibrant farming industry in the 2020s. In 1922, seven states in the Colorado River area formed the Colorado River Agreement, which controls access to the river's water. The agreement significantly overstated the average yearly discharge of 16.4 million acre-feet of water. As a result, Arizona received far less water than New Mexico, which received 37.3% of the Lower Basin state supplies. The riparian principle does not govern legal rights to water in the West, unlike in the East. Legal water rights in the Western United States are based on the earlier possession principle, which established a seniority ranking. This approach encouraged immigrants and farmers to carry on using river water, even when there was a shortage. As masses of immigrants flocked to the region, the previous legal allocation concept encouraged the ineffective method, putting more pressure on the already overloaded water supply. Phoenix saw population growth in the 1950s due to low housing costs, low taxes, and its rising reputation as a retirement destination. The city saw more new buildings than it had during 1914 and 1946, and the number of residents increased by over 74% in just 10 years. Since then, Phoenix has experienced a substantially higher rate of growth, especially during the decades between 1970 and 1990. Today, Phoenix is a significant hub for the contemporary high-tech industry. Motorola chose Arizona for its low taxes, fair business rules, and accessibility to their parallel activities in Southern California when they established a research and development center in Phoenix in 1948. This advantage enabled Phoenix to draw companies, jobs, and residents out of Southern California, which Albuquerque and New Mexico were unable to match at first. In 1979, Intel followed, spending more than $23 billion to build four advanced semiconductor production facilities in Chandler and Ocotillo. Phoenix established Intel's sole largest semiconductor manufacturing plant in the United States with approximately 13,000 employees operating across two sites. The expected annual financial impact on Arizona proved to be more than $8.6 billion. However, semiconductor production is a highly water-intensive process requiring thousands of gallons of water per day to clean microscopic wafers and equipment. Intel constructed a massive water reclamation facility adjacent to its campuses, purifying more than 9 million gallons of pure water daily, enabling them to make use of their own commercial water supply without drawing more from Phoenix's water supply. As Phoenix's demographics and businesses expanded, so did the city's and state's water usage. However, Arizona's peak water use was in 1980, and the state has effectively decreased its use of water every decade since. This is partly due to Arizona's commitment to water conservation, which resulted in the creation of the Arizona State Department of Water Resource Management in order to discourage home water use during the hotter summer months. In 2024, Phoenix began using recycled wastewater to irrigate its recreational facilities and parks while constructing another facility to manage additional wastewater and supply high-quality water. Arizona distributes only 22% of its groundwater use for municipal and domestic purposes, 
with only 6% going to industrial use. Since 2000, a mega drought has dammed the southwest, reducing the flow of water into the Colorado River. The 1922 Colorado River Agreement's undervalues have resulted in increased river water consumption, lower water levels, and the loss of millions of Americans' hydroelectric power. The U.S. federal authorities warned that severe limits to Colorado River water extraction would be required to avoid a disaster. Joe Biden's government warned against implementing federally imposed water restrictions on the state's water consumption. They considered two options. One that utilized the state's senior water rights mechanism, which could have imposed cuts on fewer senior water users in Nevada and Arizona, as well as their urban areas, the big cities of Las Vegas and Phoenix, and the other that would have bypassed the legal system of senior water rights and mandated equal water restrictions on California, Nevada, and Arizona. California, Arizona, and Nevada accepted in May 2023 to take actions to save at least 3 million acre-feet of fresh water for a further three years, until the end of 2026, in exchange for $1.2 billion in federal aid. The federal government claimed that these reductions would be sufficient to prevent a water disaster until at least 2027. In June 2023, the Arizona Department of Water Management released a 100-year groundwater model estimate for the Phoenix metropolis region, revealing that the area has only enough leftover groundwater to meet 96% of its expected groundwater demand. Phoenix is addressing water shortages by planting more trees along the roadways, which may discourage residents from abandoning their garden areas. Pushing farmers in Arizona and California to abandon water demand, which require a lot of water, can be helpful. Saudi Arabia used to produce alfalfa for livestock and dairy cows, but banned it as a result of water scarcity. In 2018, the Saudi Kingdom purchased 3,000 acres of farmland west of Phoenix to cultivate alfalfa and export it back to Saudi Arabia. Arizona terminated the Saudi's farm contract signaling future restrictions on alfalfa farming. A single Taiwanese business produces more than 60% of the world's semiconductor manufacturing. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, ranks as one of the world's largest mega-corporations, with a market capitalization of $565 billion. In 2020, TSMC announced a $12 billion plan to develop a new semiconductor production campus in Phoenix, Arizona, citing low tax rates and the city's long tradition of supporting two Intel semiconductor manufacturing sites. The Biden administration approved the Chips and Science Act in 2022, allocating approximately $53 billion in government aid and tax credits to boost semiconductor production on American soil. Intel announced a $2 billion commitment in the Phoenix area to build two advanced semiconductor factories, twice its previous investments. TSMC and Intel's $60 billion joint investment in new semiconductor production facilities in Phoenix is the biggest foreign direct investment in US history. Experts predict that the establishment of TSMC and Intel's water-intensive semiconductor manufacturing facilities in Phoenix will raise Arizona's water demand, currently representing approximately 6% of the state's water usage. TSMC has previously stated that operating one of its new facilities will require over 9 million gallons of water per day, which is equivalent to approximately 3% of Phoenix's present water consumption levels. 
Arizona's officials are considering various options for bringing more water into Phoenix while boosting city supplies. IDE Technologies, an Israeli corporation, has controversially proposed building the world's largest desalination plant in Mexico on the coast of the Sea of Cortez. Workers will build a roughly 200-meter-long water link from the facility through the desert, linking it to Arizona's two major cities, Phoenix and Tucson. ID Technologies says that with additional pipelines built along this route, the company will be able to deliver up to one million more acre-feet of clean drinking water to Arizona each year, boosting Arizona's water supply by nearly 7%, or more than 14%. Groundwater is a valuable asset and Phoenix must regulate its supply and use in order to survive. How do you feel about this? Thank you for watching. See you in an upcoming video.